In this session, we will go over the several methods that can be used for phylogenetics studies. One of the most popular relies on the Bayesian framework. We will now cover the basic concepts of Bayesian statistics and molecular clock models. There are two major camps of statistics, the frequentist statistics and the Bayesian statistics. Frequentist or classical statistics look at straight probabilities with confidence intervals that present the probability of an event happening. The result of a frequentist approach is either a true or false conclusion from a significance tester, usually a p-value. The conclusion is given as a sample-derived confidence interval that covers the true value. Bayesian statistics is based on the theorem proposed by Reverend Thomas Bayes, where we can model the data taking in consideration prior information to update the probability that an event occurred, thus deriving its posterior probability. The prior information determines how you search the probability landscape. The result of a Bayesian approach is a probability distribution for what is known about the parameters given the results of the experiment or study. So, in Bayesian phylogenetic inference, we can assign a prior probability to each hypothesis. In this case, an equal probability suggests no prior preference for any tree topology. This is usually referred to as an uninformative prior. Then, we will use statistical tools and models in conjunction with genetic data to update this prior, resulting in a posterior probability for each of these topologies. Our central model is the phylogenetic tree, which is a representation of relatedness. The molecular clock allows measuring evolutionary histories in time units instead of genetic distance. Adding the coalescent models allows us to infer the population demographic history by relating patterns in trees to how the population size changes over time. The final layer that we will consider is the spatial information, which will be covered in the next sessions. These types of inferences rely on phylodynamic data or heterochronous data, meaning that pathogen genomes are sampled at different points in time and from different locations. This allows the estimation of evolutionary rates and of the dates at the nodes of the phylogenetic tree. We measure evolutionary rates using molecular clock models, which are subdivided in two main models. The strict molecular clock, which assumes that all branches in the phylogenetic tree accumulate mutations at the same rate, and the relaxed molecular clock, which assumes that the accumulation of mutations along branches of the phylogenetic tree varies in time, thus allowing the evolutionary rate to change per branch, which is often a more realistic approach. The mutation rate measures the number of mutations generated over time during replication. On the other hand, the evolutionary or substitution rate measures the numbers of mutations fixed in the population over time. Variation among nucleotide sites and differences in the probabilities of change among the four nucleotides have been observed in nearly every molecule examined. Besides strict and relaxed molecular clocks, local clocks have been developed as something in the middle allowing evolutionary rates to change for branches assigned to any particular state, wherein all lineages in a clade share a common substitution rate. Local clocks are based on the assumption that the strict molecular clock hypothesis holds for closely related taxa. In this case, Warabi et al. employed a host-specific local clock that allows individual host types to have different rates of molecular evolution. 